Hi Sir Ram. Thanks for joining I Mocha's Women's Day celebrations and we are absolutely ecstatic to have you here and to have this conversation with you because I am sure that women of I Mocha and women everywhere would be very interested to hear about what you have to say especially about the topic which is navigating your career as a working woman uh, the journey it's I I feel it's been quite a roller coaster for me I started uh, off as a student of medicine then uh, changed my interest to uh, to research and then started loving literature and uh, did my masters in english literature and then I fell in love with teaching and started teaching because I wanted to do my research in uh, literature as well but then I thought you know why not spend time with children and then as I started teaching I felt that uh, I am also good at uh, speaking at public platforms so why not explore that and so i started uh, content writing and i started anchoring and meanwhile i also started modeling and then i realized i can do well on camera as well so let's try this avenue also while uh, pursuing uh, while being a teacher i also realized that you know i was i was working well i was enjoying my work and i thought that i'm kind of being I'm overworking myself so why not take a break and uh, start modeling full time for a while see how this goes and you know it just snowballed into being a model you know just snowballed into this this uh, going me going into the pageant world and then uh, one year later I get this sash and the crown home so yeah I, as I say it's been a roller coaster it has literally been a roller coaster ride for me so what advice do you have for working women who are struggling to balance their career and familial responsibilities because that can be a huge task as well for women so first i think it is very important for us to stop asking this question uh, that how 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 do women navigate or how do women balance between uh, work and 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 family life because i think the more important question to ask is why we don't ask this question to men and uh, the answer i feel to it is that we don't expect the same responsibilities from men and why don't we do that you know it's a question after question that we need to ask ourselves to reach that answer so why we don't expect such, such responsibilities from men is because we've been raised that way in this patriarchy that Uh, men are the breadwinners and when they come home you go with a glass of water serve them yeah you take care of the children even if you're working you come home and do your chores but i think that mindset needs to change and it will change with us so my advice to women is don't you know stop treating your husband as some <laughs> i would be very candid in saying some swarg ki apsara <laughs> he's not that he is your partner yeah. treat him like a partner and treat yourself like a partner you both are sailing in the same boat and it needs to balance from both the ends and so there are some places where you need to pitch in and there are certainly many many places where your partner needs to pitch in and that's i think the only way you can balance your work and and family life we used to live in joint family setups which was easier uh, in terms of navigating careers because we had someone taking care of our children at home but now we don't live in such setups anymore we live in a nuclear family and so the responsibilities have to be divided between two people that's the husband and the wife and i think it is only fair to ask both of them to to take part in sharing those responsibilities equally yeah absolutely i think both genders are equally responsible for whatever familial space that they create together but we thought that it was a little bit pertinent to ask this question because there is still a lot of societal expectations gender bias and navigating through that as a working woman can also be a challenge How do you deal with the regressive stereotypical stigma of the society towards beauty pageants? Yeah, um been asked this question so many times now and then uh <laughs> I I really didn't know how to answer this 
two years ago because I was that person who was asking this question that what is it about beauty pageants that makes them so um, I mean why, why do people participate I was that person who used to think that they are very regressive I used to think that you know it is objectifying women but I think when you put yourself in those shoes then you realize that it's not a cakewalk when I participated like it was it took me a year to win the nationals and then go on to the internationals and the kind of work that I had to put in was not uh, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that it was anything less than a boot camp for me it was nothing less than a military training for me honestly and uh, yes I think uh, it is very important for people to understand that we have to stop seeing women as just mothers and and just wives and, and daughter-in-laws and daughters uh, we have to start seeing them in different roles as well you know when uh, so especially uh, just an example you know when you when I walked on on that stage in a swimsuit women uh, many many people must have thought that what is she wearing she's somebody's mother she is she somebody's daughter she's somebody's wife why is she wearing that we have to stop thinking like that we have to unlearn that Thing, uh, that that thing and start treating women as women as human beings on to the next question so women go through many changes in their lives like be it on a personal level or professional however we see a trend in general that women who are stepping back into their careers after breaks are usually not given opportunities and these breaks are seen detrimental to their career growth so what advice yeah. would you give to women who are getting back into their careers so I have uh, uh, personally seen this um, I had a very lovely colleague uh, a few years ago and uh, because of why women usually go on breaks is we know it is either due to childbirth or they are raising their children or their children are having their uh, you know board exams so they take a break from work or their husband or their in-laws are unwell these are the reason and all these responsibilities are to be taken care of a, by a woman. That's for sure. I mean, no, I, I have seen very, very few men who would kind of take the responsibility of uh, taking care of their parent and, you know, probably taking a sabbatical from work. So that, uh, that being said, so I had this colleague who had lost her husband and she, she was an MBA, uh, you know, an A student, straight A student. And then when she came back to work after probably five to six years, she had a, a specially able child at home as well. So when she came back to work after five years, she had to start from, from scratch. She was teaching in a school, whereas she could have been uh, a college lecturer, teaching, teaching probably an MBA college or maybe working as a, as a, in, a corporate, in the corporate sector. But she had to start from the very beginning and that really you know that hurt me because I, I saw her how, how capable she was and so I feel um, let's stop idealizing this world the world is not ideal however much we want to say that the world is changing it is changing but it is changing at a very slow pace and when we come to India it is changing even slower that we are still in transition and we are still trying to kind of brush off patriarchy uh, from our from our backs and it's not an easy road so I'm I'm sure it may sound uh, a lot but you know women have to give in their 200% you cannot just say that um, uh, you know I'm, I'm not being uh, you know I, I'm not being taken care of or see how well I'm doing in my life and this is what I have to work for pennies you cannot say that you have to prove yourself that, that that is where I also felt I have felt the same I have gone through the same when I won Mrs. India even after becoming Mrs. India you know uh, I had people calling me uh, and there was a time when you know you uh, I had a certain I used to charge a certain amount for maybe a, an interview or something and they would say no 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 you're asking for too much because if it was a miss if it was a girl you know who, who would have won that pageant I mean, the world would have been at her feet, but just because I was married, uh, people had a very different price tag for me. And now that I've won Mrs. World, the same people come up to me asking for interviews and I, 
and I declined, you know. So that's uh, now I am at that position of power. So I would, and I toiled through throughout to reach that position of power. So I, I mean, it may sound too much, but you have to toil your way through. There is, there is no other way. Honestly, there is no other way. Since you're a teacher yourself, you must have witnessed how building the right skills is absolutely crucial for growth. So, do you believe that going skills first is the way to achieve gender equality and equity? By that, I mean when we look at women who are entering professional spaces, there are lots of gender bias that seeps in. Um, even when you look at people coming from certain backgrounds. even names make a difference so do you think if we go completely skills first that would uh, go a long way i could not agree more to this being a teacher myself i feel that a very small example you know when i used to teach and we had to give students holidays homework for uh, summer vacations my students used to come up to me and say ma'am you know we've been doing the same thing in class and now you are asking us to do the same thing over again at home what's the difference what new is uh, is that that we are learning and uh, maybe you should have given us something else you know something different and then i used to feel bad because i think i'm not at, i wasn't at that position to change the whole curriculum for them but i i feel that now uh, uh, with new uh, new types of curriculums coming up in our school systems i think we need to uh start focusing on skills and by skills i mean very very simple skills you know uh maybe maybe add a class once a week in your school time table just once a week 40 minutes a week to make all of the students learn how to how to make rotis for example as simple as that how to cook how to do laundry in their summer vacations you know give them a task to do laundry in summer vacations or teach them how to sew sewing is something that you know a lot of people don't know so you know men men can stitch their own buttons at the end of the day so as simple as that as simple as that and i think these little skills can go so long such a long way after you know when you get married no mother has to tell her son you know beta you you get married now because uh, i can't see you eating outside anymore you know you should get someone home you should have a wife who can take care of you who can uh, manage home no manage your own home cook your own food you don't need a wife for that maybe you need a house help for that but not a wife for that you need a wife to live your life you know life beautifully not for her to come home and scrub your floor for you which you can very well do yourself so these are the little things women are born multitaskers do you think is what essential skills do you think each woman must have I think uh, it is very important for women to learn to have financial freedom and to learn how to manage their own finances. That's one skill that every woman should learn um doing their own taxes, maybe you know investing mutual funds, SIPs, all of those words that just go over our head most of the time. I think these are the things we need to focus on. This is one skill that is very financial literacy is the future. It is very important. Women are toiling through life. It it's it, they are juggling, they are juggling, they are multitasking as you said. And so in all of that we tend to forget ourselves, we tend to forget taking care of ourselves. We just keep running in that rut again and again every single day and we stop focusing on if you work in a company, you don't you you it wasn't your dream to be a manager at a company. Your dream must have been to become a leader, to become to have that leadership skills, to to maybe start your own company one day. But where did that dream go? it just you know became a part of that rut and you forgot about it you forgot all about it so have give yourself at least 2 hours maybe 2 hours a day or 2 hours in 3 days or 2 hours a week but give yourself those 2 hours to plan your future keep doing your work whatever you're doing keep doing that but once in a while just shut everything else shut yourself away from the world and start focusing and start navigating to make notes and and do some research and plan a future for yourself that is very very important uh, to grow thank you so much sargam we this was an insightful conversation i thoroughly enjoyed conversing with you thank you very much sandhya i had a wonderful time